Lillian Dindal is a clinical psychologist and she has a website called actfinderpath.com. Yes, so, great. And by the way, for people who are interested, ACT therapy stands for Acceptance Commitment Therapy. That has saved my life when I was going through what I've been told is called the dark night of the soul. So it's something like, uh, it's a, well, we can talk about that another time. But I've watched much of Lillian's work on YouTube, her her lectures, and they keep like, man, oh man, like every time I'd watch it, it's like taking what I imagine is a benzodiazepine. It's just, just <laughs> an, 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 an anxiolytic. Okay, and Greg Henriques is someone who's had me on his podcast. I'm, I'm lucky for. He has his own toe called the Unified Theory of Knowledge and is someone that I would like to have on the toe podcast. But much like almost anyone else who has a toe and wants to come on toe, I have to study for months in advance. So I haven't had you on, Greg, until now because I want to go deep into your toe. I know that sounds a bit odd. And Jesse Mitchell. Fair enough. Like we're friends. You have a great YouTube channel that everyone is jealous of, including myself. Correct. And it's called <laughs> Sam is here. Sam is also corroborating that. He <laughs> it's called it's called American Alchemy. So I'm doing this all from memory, just so you know. And Grant Cameron, UFO researcher, fellow Canadian. We worked behind the scenes on a on something, or we, at least we tried to. And and I wanna well, I want to thank you all for coming. I know that this is an odd bunch, but none of you are odd. I'm saying the mixture, <laughs> the confection, the ball market, <laughs> the motley, the, the interweaving. Okay, so what did I miss out? Greg, can you tell me? Then we'll go Jesse, Lillian, then Grant. What did I miss? Um, I'm a professor of psychology. Cool to have an ACT person here. Uh, I love ACT. Uh, I, talk, I talk a lot about ACT. Uh, um, and uh, I just uh, released a book. Uh, so you said shameless plug here. A new synthesis for solving the problem of psychology, addressing the enlightenment gaps. That's sort of the latest articulation of kind of how some of my work in theoretical clinical psychology can uh, address the bridge between biology and psychology, the social sciences. Yes. And then Jesse, and then Lily, and then Grant. What did uh, I miss? I'm jealous of your podcast, Kurt, but I, I, which I love. And thank you for having Thanks. me. And I think it's so cool uh, to get this odd intersection of people together. But um, uh, Jesse Michaels, I have a YouTube channel, like you mentioned, American Alchemy. Uh, before that, I, I worked for, for Peter Thiel, who's kind of a you know, venture capitalist and entrepreneur for four years. And before that, I was at Google, actually. So uh, kind of have a tech background but am really interested in, in media and also just kind of uh, similar to you, Kurt, I think I have a, a, a basically unsatiable uh, interest in getting to the, the fundamental nature of reality. And then I think you do it in a far more kind of analytical math science way. And I do it in like a wacky way is the way I would put it. <laughs> yeah, great, great. And Lillian, please. Hi. Professor Hi, everyone. Jay. Nice to be with you all. Um, I think you covered it. I'm mainly um, a researcher, a clinical. I'm a clinical psychologist, but mainly do research um, on how to find innovative ways to disseminate ACT actually into the population because the regular type of therapy going weekly every week for months um, doesn't actually reach most people. So trying to find innovative ways to reach more people. And before we get to Grant, I want to touch on that point, something I recall from your lecture, so you can correct me if this is incorrect, is that you have a program, and I think this may be generally offered, where it's four hours long or five hours, or it's a day long, it's an intensive, which means that you go and then you learn about ACT therapy, and then you don't, it's always useful if you continue to go to therapy, but you don't need to, and you can see several benefits, whereas traditional therapy or psychotherapy, you go once a week. And if you don't go once a month or so, or once every, or bi-weekly, you see a huge tapering. You don't get the results. Now, so is, what's correct or incorrect about that? <laughs> yeah, so I developed um, a one-day ACT workshop. So it's kind of like a retreat style, and it's about five to six hours, uh, very experiential. Um, so you get essentially the entire protocol in one day. And that's meant to kind of get behind, you know, 
get the whole treatment in one day because the problem is treatment adherence and completion is a big problem. And so, yes, and we've done multiple studies that are funded by NIH and the VA that have found that actually this one day intervention is effective at reducing depression, improving anxiety, functioning, quality of life, so on. So um, some people do need boosters. I need a booster myself <laughs> all the time. Uh, so I need you know, one right but, now. Yeah, exactly. So, but it is, you know, you learn a lot of the processes experientially during that day. Um, and it's quite intensive and, and powerful, I've found. Well, research has found empirically. So, Grant Cameron. What did okay. I miss out in your introduction, man? Um, I I've, you I've been in the paranormal business since uh, shortly after they invented dirt. Um, <laughs> I have um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I have a, a, a podcast uh, called uh, Paranormal UFO Consciousness Podcast, and I have a YouTube, which is uh, the White House UFO YouTube site. I've just released three books, and I guess the the main book that is just coming out now is on the UFO sky pilots, which deals with 36 plus witnesses who claim that they have flown the craft. And I go through the pattern of what they describe. They're all describing the same thing, how it relates to consciousness and the theory of uh, you know, reality and all this kind of stuff. And, and I'm all, I've also had released a weird book called, it was actually called Weird the paranormal world of uh, ports and manifestations, which I think is one of the first books ever written on it. And that's uh, where you have physical mediums or poltergeist or UFO experiences where things will appear, disappear, uh, move around the room and this sort of stuff. And I have a whole collection of stuff from various uh, places around the world. Hmm. Okay. Well, I have no plan for this collection of, of cats. It's difficult <laughs> to herd. So... Let's see. Well, firstly, just like, man, this is just fun. Thank you all for coming out, spending December 30th. It's a fairly sacred day. It's almost it's like Christmas near the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you. So let's see. What, what is it, Lillian? We'll start with you because you have to get going in about five minutes. What is it about 2022 that I know that's putting on, on the spot? Like what story from 2022 sticks out to you the most, is most relevant? And what is the best insight from your work? This Morocco making it to the audience. semifinals is my favorite story from 2022. <laughs> <laughs> I'm soccer. surprised no one mentioned Morocco. that once. The, right, right. Um, what's your second question? Second question comes from the audience. Quote, unquote, the best insight from your work. The best insight from my work. Um, I think after years and years and years of doing this, I've come to recognize that like awareness is the most important first step to things like you have to be aware of your triggers you have to be aware of your thought processes the emotions of the moment like if you don't have that that awareness first then so much is on autopilot i feel um and so i've just come to realize this awareness idea is just so important um you know can we i don't ask you a question about that if you don't mind of course so what about if someone's issue that they're coming to act for is because they have too much self-awareness where they feel like I'm constantly thinking about consciousness and I feel like I'm almost having a psychotic break. So I'm speaking about my former self at least and somewhat my current self. And so to say, oh, I need more awareness. Like, no, no, no. Awareness is hurting me right now, hurting me right now. Well, I think what, so what you're you describing is more like rumination and obsessiveness actually it's not so much true awareness in the way i'm thinking of it i mean awareness is recognizing like okay i am going down a rabbit hole here i am i am being obsessive now i am ruminating now um so it's actually more like developing an insight into where you get stuck and then um where you get triggered and then so you even know, the next being aware is, of where I'm so sorry to interrupt you. It's so difficult when it's over Zoom because I, I, I apologize. But what I was going to say is like, so in that case, you'd say being aware that what you're calling awareness is too much. Like just being aware. It's almost like a meta awareness. Yeah, it's or definitely might, that, a meta awareness. Something else called? Actually, it's like okay. stepping outside of yourself and recognizing like, okay, like right now I am ruminating. Like I am in this, you know, phase of rumination or I'm obsessing about this thing. And 
how does how does doing this move me forward in my life? You know, so it's step one is the awareness and step two is, is this, is, you know, is being stuck on this thought process, is being stuck on this, um, you know, wait, whatever you're ruminating about, is this moving me forward in my life or is it keeping me stuck? How does buying into a particular thought um, affect my behavior next? So, I, I'd be interested in hearing what Greg, what you think about this too. You're a psychologist. Yeah, no, certainly. I mean, uh, uh, I'm a big fan of ACT. I'll, I'll, I'll certainly start there. I cultivate and training my uh, doc students awareness, acceptance, and change, uh, active change in relation. Uh, I built a thing called COMMO, which is basically it merges ACT and what's called interpersonal neurobiology. Uh, and certainly this capacity to step outside, become an observer in relationship to that be able to accept where you are and then be committed to motivated, stop valued states of being and being able to reflect on that in a way that isn't reactive or defensive or brittle or rigid. That's a beautiful thing if you can learn how to do it. So uh, I'm all in support. I, I'm i willing, I, I'd like to ask everyone before I leave to just think about something, if that's okay, Kurt. You said we could just ask questions. So I'm gonna ask Yeah, question. please, please do. Um, and I think I'm, I'm gonna do this just because it's the new year coming up and um, it's an act move, so let's do it. So I want everyone on here today just to imagine that it's 15 years from now, you know, that it's 15 years from now and you've continued living your life exactly as you're living it right now. You don't make any changes. So I want right, you now- You're referring to us five as well as the people in the audience. Everyone, like just everyone. Okay. I mean, this is an exercise I like to do pretty regularly. Um, so imagine it's 15 years from now and you li you're living exactly as you are now and you don't make any changes. So complete the following sentences. I spent too much time I spent too little time and if I could go back in time, what I would like to do differently is. Does anyone want to share? If you can briefly share because Lillian, I know you have to get going in maybe three minutes. Can you stick around for three more minutes? William? Okay, great. Who wants to share? Okay, I'll go. Um, basically, what it would come down to is you look at near-death experiences. I'm sure I've learned from that is that I spent too much time down the rabbit hole, not enough time with family. And when it comes down to the last minutes of your life, what's most important is your family and the time you didn't spend with them. Yeah, so for me, I pictured... I always picture my wife whenever I think of exercises, whenever I have exercises like this and I spend, I, I always prioritize her, but I, I could spend more time with her and definitely I could spend more time with family. So my mom and dad, and, and I feel like I work too much though. I love it. And interestingly enough, I feel like I would be more unhealthy. I love junk food. Like I love it, but I abstain <laughs> from it. I abjure it. And I, and I feel like I can, I can indulge some more, but anyway, Jesse and Greg. If you don't mind, if you could be Greg, you want to go? I, I, sure. Go. I mean, uh, you know, I'm I love contact with the present moment, and I still get pulled away further than I do. Um, so I'm always looking to expand uh, the deep appreciation, the awe that I have for being in the world, um, and taking time for gratitude and awe in relationship to that. Uh, also, then connecting to that which I love. Um, which I'm fortunate to be able to do because I, you know, I have my work and I'm able to do that. Um, but being that and having gratitude for being that, I, I'm able to achieve some of that. Uh, I could always do more of that. I'm similar. I think I'm uh, way too kind of goal oriented or future oriented rather. Like I live, I sort of sacrifice the present for the future a lot. And I don't sort of, you know, wake up and smell the roses and just enjoy myself and do kind of, uh, spontaneous things uh, on a whim and uh often the best things come from that kind of childlike instinct and so i want to i want to indulge that more over the next 15 years 
Lillian, Is that thank the right you. Answers? That was great. Yeah, what, what, did those were those correct? Were those okay? Were There's those no right? Do we, get, do we get points? <laughs> There's no. I mean, it's Who, funny the best, no matter how many times I do this, it's like for me, it's always like I spend too much time worrying about if I'm doing enough, if I am enough, if you know. And it's just uh, incredible that 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 stays no matter. But it's a good reminder, like okay, I want to be, you know, I want to be more in the moment, like you said, Greg. Um, and then, you know, I'm sure you've all heard about this book, um, The Top 10 Regrets of the Dying. Yeah. Have you heard about it? It's like, it's such a beautiful um, book that a palliative care nurse wrote. You know, she just documented um, all the things that these dying patients said they regretted. And what's amazing is that, you know, our regrets are all very similar. You know, we worry too much. We don't connect with our families too much. We, we're not spontaneous enough. So, Yeah, there's always that question that they ask, uh, you know, when somebody's ruminating about something and say, are you going to be worrying about this on the last day when yeah. you're, you're going to die? And it's like, no, well, then don't worry about it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lillian, I know you got to get going. I, for everyone, Happy New the Year, website everybody. again yes. is, Happy please New say it. Please, Lillian, can you repeat the website? And then I'll also oh, put it on. Oh, sorry. Act, actfindyourpath.com. Actfindyourpath.com is also going to be on the screen in just a moment. Thank you so much. Happy Thank New Year, everyone. Around. All right. You just watched a clip from an eight-hour live stream behemoth Leviathan podcast from Theories of Everything, which is a channel where we explore physics, mathematics, and consciousness. What is a theory of everything? How do you merge quantum field theory with general relativity? Click here or in the description for the full podcast where there are several people make appearances all the way from George Knapp to Jeremy Corbell to Gary Nolan to Avi Loeb to John Verveke to Donald Hoffman to Michael Levin to Ian McGilchrist and 40 more all in one eight hour long podcast links in the description.